Martha Cannery. Born on the 1st of May 1852, died on the 1st of August 1903. Better known as Calamity Jane, Martha was the eldest of Robert and Charlotte Cannery's six children. Her father had a gambling problem and her mother had previously been a prostitute. In 1865, her family moved by wagon train from their home in Missouri to Virginia City, Montana. During the journey, when the family had reached Blackfoot, Martha's mother died of pneumonia. In the spring of 1866, after arriving in Virginia City, her father decided to travel on to Salt Lake City, Utah. Once there, Robert began to farm 40 acres of land, but died only a year after their arrival. In 1867, at just 15 years old, Martha took charge of her five younger siblings and a year later loaded up their wagon and took her family to Fort Bridger, Wyoming, then on the Union Pacific Railroad to Piedmont. In Piedmont, Martha took whatever job she could find in order to support her large family. She worked as a dishwasher, cook, waitress, dance hall girl, ox team driver, and sporadic prostitute at the Fort Laramie Three Mile Hog Ranch, until in 1874 she found work as a scout at Fort Russell. Martha was involved in several military campaigns during the Indian Wars, and according to her it was during one of these campaigns that she gained her infamous nickname. Apparently, while on a mission to quell an uprising of Indians, her detachment was attacked and her command post captain was shot. Martha managed to catch him as he fell from his horse and succeeded in getting him safely back to the fort. Upon their return, he christened her Calamity Jane, Heroine of the Plains. Not everyone believed Martha, and a more popular theory was that her nickname arose from her repeated warnings to men that to offend her was to court calamity. In 1876, Martha joined a wagon train of prospectors, gamblers and prostitutes led by Charlie Utter, headed from Fort Laramie to the Gold Rush in Deadwood, South Dakota. Her arrival in Deadwood later that year was heralded by the Black Hills pioneer with the headline, Calamity Jane Has Arrived. It was when the party stopped in Cheyenne that she met Wild Bill Hickok. Martha had become infatuated with Wild Bill, despite his noted indifference, but shortly after their arrival in Deadwood, he was shot in the back of the head during a poker game by Jack McCall. McCall had lost heavily to Wild Bill the previous day, and was apparently insulted when Wild Bill offered him money for breakfast in consolation. McCall was found innocent of murder at his first trial, on the grounds that Wild Bill had allegedly killed his brother while he was a marshal in Abilene, Kansas. Martha claimed that she led a lynch mob in pursuit of McCall as he fled Deadwood, armed only with a meat cleaver, as in her anger she had left her guns at home. It was around this time that Martha was most noted for her alcoholism, apparently renting a horse and buggy from Cheyenne for what was intended to be a one-mile journey, but became a 90-mile drunken joyride. She also returned to occasional prostitution in the employ of notorious Deadwood Madam, Dora Dufresne. Despite her depression and habitual drinking, in 1878 she volunteered to nurse the victims of a smallpox epidemic. She also rescued several passengers of a stagecoach when they were attacked by Indians on their approach to Deadwood. The driver was killed during the pursuit and Martha took over the reins and drove the stagecoach safely on to its destination. In 1881, Martha bought a ranch west of Miles City, Montana, along the Yellowstone River, where she kept an inn. She married a Texan, Clinton Burke, and the two had a daughter together in 1887, who was adopted by foster parents. In 1893, Martha began to appear as a storyteller in Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, and later, in the 1901 Pan American Exposition. In 1903, she returned to the Black Hills alone, and for the next few months found employment doing the laundry and cooking for Dora Dufresne's brothel. In late July, she travelled by freight train to Terry, South Dakota, but had to be carried to a room at the Callaway Hotel after heavy drinking made her incredibly ill. Although a doctor was called, Martha died of inflammation of the bowels and pneumonia. After her funeral, which overflowed with mourners, Martha was buried in Mount Moriah Cemetery in Deadwood, and, as a posthumous joke, was given an eternal resting place beside her reluctant beloved, Wild Bill Hickok. 
Martha was illiterate, and much of the information about her life comes from an autobiographical pamphlet she dictated in 1896, which was intended to attract audiences to a dime museum tour she was due to begin. She was also well known for her tall tales and exaggeration, so it is difficult to know how much of what is known about her life is actually true. What is undeniable is that Martha navigated a harsh life in a male-dominated world where, despite often being the source of ridicule due to her masculinity and bravado, she remained true to her character and was known for her remarkable kindness and bravery. That is why she is one of our favourite weird wonderful women. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like, share and subscribe and thanks for stopping by Weird Wonderful Women, the channel dedicated to all those weird and wonderful ladies who dare to be different.